for Halo here, <laughs> coming at you with some Kingdom New Lands <laughs> on Steam with my buddy Traxxas, but I might refer to him as Sniper <laughs> for most of the playthrough. Say hi. Hello. So anyway, guys. Yes, I have my knee up. Don't mind that. <laughs> this chair is really fucking uncomfortable. But anyways, me and Traxxas might have some theory videos we might... Just make it a podcast thing. Also, if this. No, no, fucking... no, no, I'm gonna change my freaking wife. No, nine, nine. Also, nine. he's playing some Ark Survival Evolved, so go mess with him on that. No, but that's awful. But I yeah. Have a console, it... so have fun trying to figure out what my actual uh, console name is. Whatever you say! <laughs> no. Totally doesn't put it down in the description. But seriously, me and Trax is here, have some are possibly going to make some theory videos and stuff while I test the games that actually work with my fucking recording software. Pretty sure this I'm is going to suck, like a potato. but hey. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care that my progress will be lost. <laughs> I'm okay with a new game. <laughs> but yeah, guys. First theory that we might be covering is Art Survival Evolve theories. Heck, we might even open up some of the dossiers and stuff, and talk mm -hmm. about them. Uh, yes, we actually, well, um, even though I haven't talked to him for over a week, I've actually been discovering some interesting things all around ARC. Uh, it actually comes from dossiers, well, the notes, from both the island and Scorch Surf. Hmm. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that these theories will actually go pretty decently well. <laughs> Yeah, they might get some <laughs> some views if I'm not mistaken. Hmm. Just starting up my um, kingdom right now, so if I'm so just forgive yeah. me. <laughs> yeah. Better do. Um. Better so, do. Halo, do you have any theories surrounding the obelisk, the dossiers? What? Do you have anything that surrounds any of the mythical creatures by any chance? Currently, not really. I do have a few for the mythical creatures, but not really as much as you'd expect. <laughs> hmm. The main thing about the mythical creatures is mostly that they're genetically designed, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, well, I know I know of Anthomia and Riot and all them have made certain videos and stuff of, like, the endocrine yeah. rex and shit. Hmm. Oh, yeah. But that's for oh. Isle, so nobody cares. But ha. <laughs> <laughs> um... My uh, theory is, um, well, not much as a theory, it's more of a speculation. Because yeah. uh, if you think about it... That's pretty it, much what all uh, this is, because there's no solid, concrete evidence. <laughs> right. Like, if I, uh, I'm on the console, y'all can't see this, because, well... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we can be me. Uh, I need um, three fucking coins. If I were to pull up one of my notes, which is uh, the Hell No Note 1, sure. it would say this. Like, I want you... Like, you all, you need to actually need to listen to how she writes. Then I want to read one of Rockwell's. Um, I had to pick the desert. Why the hell did I pick the desert? Well, I, I suppose pick is a rather strong word for it. I'm still not entirely certain at just how I got that device working, but it definitely seemed like it was showing me a variety... A variety of... Of different locations at oh. one point. <laughs> Unfortunately, I didn't realize that a portal it opened was sending me to this unpleasant wasteland until I already stepped through it. That's just typical of me, isn't it? Always sleeping, never never looking. Oh, better make the best of it, and by that, I mean, better not die of heat exhaustion. Well, if you think about how she t writes and how possible how she talks, it, she's more of a 1990s to almost 2000s era type of person. To an extent, uh, it, would kinda, it would kind of depend on her penmanship. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> if you and if you go to Rockwell, it's all in cursive, and I can barely read it, but I can make out certain things. His also, name CJ, is... for some of the people that don't know in the audience, te tell us about Rockwell and all them. Like, tell <laughs> tell the people about some of the notes in the arc. Like, for example, well, some of the people that don't know, there's a certain there are these certain books that you can pick up in the game that you'll find across scattered across yeah, the sure. land. Um, yeah. Uh... Also, sorry if he cuts out every once in a while. Helena is the person who was writing the dossiers before. Like, if any of yeah. you have ever seen videos on people who played Ark and then someone tamed a creature, it would bring up a. It would also bring up a. It used to bring. It used to bring up the creature dossiers whenever mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, and we didn't know who was writing them at before. Like, like before me and him started doing things like this, like de discussing stuff, we were already thinking about who could be writing these, who could be taking the risks to write these. My main it's thought? Creatures. Aliens. Of course. You didn't see it right now, but I just did the fucking alien pose. <laughs> aliens. And then you did. <laughs> uh, anyways, in the, uh, the dossiers, which were the ones with the creatures, was... Ah, okay, Chase! And it... And if you find, if you look at the, I'm uh, <laughs> the, what are they called? The ingredient notes, the, like, for Mind Wipe, uh, stews and stuff yeah, like the mind that, is, is by move. Rockwell, a, a Englishman chemist from London from the mid-1860s, I believe. You have no idea how cool it would be if it was actually an alchemist. <laughs> um... That's actual probability from the way he, from the way of the, uh... Yeah, that's what I got from... Mind the, that, that's the kind of the feel that I got from the Mind Wipe Tonic. Some sort of alchemy to it instead of just a freaking... Um, I mean, actually, I, I actually get some of... I actually yeah. have a Mind Wipe Tonic I can look at it in a moment. Yeah. So I can actually speculate I'm pretty sure that, that was a Rockwell recipe, I think. It, it is, it was, it was. Yeah. And, um... And the, there's also ancient Egyptian stuff, which you can actually tell about how old it is, but how... But here's the catch. Hmm. The writing is ancient, but the tablets, or from the way they look, are roughly only seven to ten years old. And they have the That's also one of the things that I was thinking. What if they brought? Mm -hmm. They, I'm pretty sure that they brought the. Mm -hmm. Well, that's this is kind of where the kind of shittier version of the game comes in. I mean, I'm okay. Mm -hmm. It's it's cool if you like this game. I just personally don't because I'm not into Hunger Games. Survival of the <laughs> Fittest. This is kind of where Survival of the Fittest comes in as a mm -hmm. game and as an actual point. Because Survival of the Fittest is an actually a very prominent point in Darwinism and evolution in general. Mm -hmm. Pretty much what I think is that they took all these people from different times, like different times, different eras and shit, and gave them certain... Pretty much just drop them all on an island, see how they held up, see if they would work well together or not. Um, I mean, us I... as a player is kind of... We're kind of primitive, but we're mm -hmm. not. We're our own right. character, Actually, which we... Actually, that's, which when, is you're, uh, that's when you're somewhat well. wrong. Humanity yeah. has always been smart. They've always been creative, if you think, if you put it that way. They've always been creative. And yeah, whatever, back when we were flinging whatever, shit anyway. onto the walls while scraping our... Mm -hmm. No, that's awful, but yeah, mm -hmm. I get but what yeah. you mean. But, um, uh, if you think about it, you put them in a the so-called arc or space station, as I mentioned. Uh, yeah, space station and uh, All they station. gotta do is put... Uh, if they put the little things in there, these little diamond-looking things, um, what if those little diamond things inject them with a somewhat of a boosted intelligence rates so they can learn certain things i don't really think that's how it is i think it's more of like a pocket dimension to where you can hold stuff yeah. and you can also see menus yeah, yeah. like i imagine if you were in that arc world like in the actual dimension which this is also yeah, gonna be but... a thing on the ps4 in the vr thing you're actually gonna be able to hold up your controller and see your wrist and pull up menus kind of like that mm -hmm. yeah and uh arc park um, here's... <laughs> That's but here's was. also another thing. The Deathworm dossier. Um, Helena, yeah. she uh, has actually talked about this. She's actually talked that the the Titanic Kokoi, or however you pronounce it. Yeah, it's, a, it's actually a form of, what's it called? Uh, antlion. Uh, it's actually a form no, of antlion. No, not the antlion. Um, the Mongolian the Mongolian worm. Yeah, that's what it is. It's a. It's actually a version mm -hmm. of antlion. Uh huh. And the Kokoyo arachis <laughs> is actually different. It's mm. been genetically modified. It's been given a uh, modified version of a, gen a gene that causes gigantism in humans. Once it was injected into it, it uh, grew into immense size to prevent. That's true, but that's also kind of a latency point because here's mm -hmm. the thing the entire game is based around complete genetics and bullshit like here's the whole thing <coughs> wyvern snatching <coughs> uh that's that's actually just the whole thing of genetic crossbreeding but mm -hmm. dude the actual thing behind this is that 
the reason the you the the reason the Velociraptor is actually a Utah Raptor, and the reason that the Raptors don't have actual feathers, like scientifically accurate, is because the the Arc Devs themselves aren't going for accuracy, and they know that, but they at least gave a reason for it. Kind of like in Jurassic World, for example, they said. Dr. Henry Wu said in Jurassic World that they were changing. They were changing the DNA of the dinosaurs to actually make it fit well, make them more ferocious, make them larger, make them bigger, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. that's why the <laughs> that's why the T-Rex doesn't have feathers, and that's why the Velociraptor doesn't have as many feathers as a real-life counterpart. Also, the Velociraptor was the size of right, a fucking right. chicken, but um, yeah. To those watching the video, if you have time, I want you to look up Ark Survival Evolved Obelisk and look at their design. Um, some say they look alien, but if you look close enough, they're actually human in design, as if people from the so-called future... They remind me of the uh, Mayan temples, but not really. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right, and uh, to think about it, um, the people on the Ark are actually able to use GPSs and transponder nodes. Well, the transponder node, if you have one and you create it and you read its description, it mentions that it uses the obelisk's signal to triangulate the creatures. But there is a catch. It, it's supposed to be able to work within, inside the, the, the triangle, right? Yeah. A halo? But if they're outside, like above the water on the island or above the desert behind the obelisk, it can still triangulate them behind them. So I want you guys to think about that for a second. That's kind of like being at the North Pole, but <laughs> knowing exactly where the North Pole is. Exactly. But just going around the rim of it because you know where it is, so why mm -hmm. waste your time? Right. This probably but, is making sense to nobody out there, but hey, <laughs> still funny. But um, the thing, the thing about it is, what if... The obelisks are a supposedly supposed to, are a portal themselves. Yeah. You have to unlock each one by, but not bringing artifacts to a single one, but split up the artifacts and certain items and take them to them and unlock a portal to go home. Hmm. I think what but you're saying. this brings me to my next uh, theory that I was going to bring up. Yeah. What if, what if each humans from a different timeline, different dimension, and their homes? I'm not really thinking of destroyed. dimension, but yeah, timeline, like, like caveman like, like all the way up to like futuristic. Yeah. That's what. Yeah. That's why the whole tech tier thing is coming in. From from my thing yeah. of tech tier, I'm thinking that we are gonna see new notes from someone that somehow connects with the tech tier, like. The, the aliens or whatever the fuck gods um, I don't know but I'm thinking that they possibly uh, brought in a futuristic person that knows these things that um, other people on the arc don't know kind of like with the whole like we like didn't have a cameo we, with a character from a different game yeah kind of like how there used to be this like whole that. thing like back in the old fucking days of arc some people be able to be killed by dodos <laughs> <laughs> yes, that was a feature, and that was a very sucky feature, but I, I personally <laughs> liked it, because you could have guard you dodos. By, you were killed by dodos. Yes, I was killed oh, by I dodos see. and a fucking monkey that punched me in the face when I tried to save it. <laughs> no, <laughs> monkey! Anyways. Save me! Anyways. <laughs> anyways, continue. But anyways, oh, you made me fucking lose my punch. <laughs> That's awful. But, no. Actually, back in the old arc, there used to be points, like... If you've seen the old fucking arc videos, like, from two years back or so. Arc was a much different game. We used to not have any aquatic creatures. We used to... Hell, some of the guns weren't even in the game yet. We didn't have fortified compound bows. Hell, we barely had bows and crossbows. Almost no shotguns, none of that stuff. Like, I'm thinking they're gonna add another tier, a tech tier, <laughs> of dossiers by another person um, from a more futuristic of timeline. This video, you might laugh about what I'm about to say, but uh, I landed just now on my wyvern and I just got stuck inside of a rock. He constantly does this. <laughs> he fucking lost my bird because he jumped off of it <laughs> this one time. It I'm fucking stuck inside of a rock. <laughs> I'm stuck inside of a rock. <laughs> Okay, where's my pickaxe? Yeah. Oh, I'm stuck inside of the rocket. The wyvern's not. Here you go, homeless person. Take the money and become wait, part wait, of wait. my kingdom. <laughs> wait, 
Wait, we both are. Yeah. Okay, the wyvern's gonna get hurt. Oh, I can't even... Oh, this is weird. I can't get out of this okay. green rock. Yes. And walk out of the rock. Well, I think we're kind of past the entire... Uh... God damn it, I forgot the word. What's it called? Fucking... Time limit? No, like that. no, not the time limit. <laughs> Traxxas, help me out here. What is the thing called for fucking contemplating? No. Contemplating, not that word. It's not contemplating. Constipation. <laughs> no. Uh, where are we? Do <sighs> We're done with that part of the discussion. Let's put it that way. <laughs> Next part of the discussion. Yeah. New games coming out in 2017. First game I would like to talk about is possibly Project White. That game looks so fucking amazing. I'll possibly link it down somewhere in the description if I can. Uh, Project White, it's it's from... It's a fucked uh, up concept. Imagine Skyrim... I've never heard of it. CJ, I've... <laughs> oh, I'll edit that out. I'll edit that out. I'll make sure I'll edit that out. <laughs> okay, Traxxas. Here's the thing about Project White. You have seen it before. You just don't know the name of it. Well, well, you did. You probably did know the name of it. It's just been a long time since I've shown you. But pretty much, Project White is from the point of view. Imagine Skyrim, except from the point of view of a monster. Well, not a monster. It's referred to as a creature. If anyone out here has read the whole epic Beowulf, or <laughs> anything on that, you know that one of his first battles is Grendel. Which is a creature that is not of God. He's an outsider. The outsider is actually the name of this company. To be an outsider mm -hmm. is to not be with the crowd. The whole entire point of this game is to be kind of nihilistic. To show that you are not... Here's the thing. Everyone's the good guy, the protagonist, in their own story. But you're the bad guy. But you're not the bad guy. Say what? <laughs> okay, imagine this. And you'll, you all will probably see this in the video that I might link. Imagine that you are a small child crawling on all fours. A child creature. Just like, just like Fallout. <laughs> Kinda. A child creature walking on all fours. You're looking for your parents. You walk up to the mouth of the cave. You see your father <laughs> strung up in a Y position being hacked at by some Vikings. Possibly for a trophy. You know what I mean? Like the whole thing of taking trophies, making them... This is a majestic legendary beast. I better chop off its head and put it on my wall to make it look fucking... <laughs> to show that I'm mighty, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now imagine that you ha constantly have to evade these humans. In their in their mm. minds, in the humans' minds, the humans, in the humans, you become a trophy. No, here's the thing: in the minds of the humans, your people are trophies. Like, be a hero, slay a fucking dragon, slay a majestic beast. You know what I mean? But for yeah. you're in the side of the beast. Could you imagine how fucked up it would be if your species was getting drawn to the brink of extinction by the human race and there was almost nothing you could do about it? You'd want revenge, am I right? Yeah. So later on in this oh. video, so later on in this video, it, it comes, it shows from the eyes of a small child having to run away from humans because you are so weak you can't even challenge a freaking child human that's how weak you are but the child creature is actually very good at jumping and running and fitting into small spaces to hide it skips to a few years later to when you're adolescent to where you're a teenager you're more masculine and ripped and shit pretty much you're able to defend yourself now 
You're like way fucking able to defend yourself. You are a strong motherfucker. You're a strong, independent black woman. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure you this creature is dark skin, but that is not a fucking part of this, and that is not me being racist. That is an actual fact. Look up the game. Yeah, he. They they um, have four fingers. Here, he, I am not racist to an extent. I try not to be. Yeah, he recently does these jokes just to add a little bit of. A I I try thing. to break the tension because I know I'm being very tense. They these fuckers have four fingers. <laughs> and back to the oh, usual. Oh, so it's like an elite from Halo. Kinda yeah. Well, the elites. Yeah, I get what you mean. <laughs> I actually had to do the fucking finger motion that they make to get what you meant by the four fingers. But yeah, I get what you mean. So, anyways, these um, creatures have four fingers. Four finger motion. You just gotta cock your pinky. Yeah, I get what you mean. But <laughs> here's the thing: now that you're an adolescent creature, you can watch for yourself. It shows you withdrawing from your cave a few years later, alone. A lone hero. Let's let's call him that because that's what he thinks he is with a torch and a sword in his hand. You run up to him, bite that motherfucker's neck, and then push him off of your hill like, no, this isn't your story anymore, this is mine, get the fuck out of here. And oh my god, the moon is red, oh my god, these guys better shoot the fucking demons. This is just my game going on right now. But yeah, now that you're able to fight, this is the most fucked up thing and it's so cool. It I had like a nerdgasm when I saw this. Pretty much, the creature backed up. Like, I thought, oh, he was retreating back into his home. Like, he he got that guy off of his property, he got my fucking law, and pushed him away, then goes back inside his fucking get den. Off my lawn. Exactly, get off my lawn, Billy! <laughs> but yeah, this is when it gets fucked up. This motherfucker gets a running start, then jumps. Full speed. And then this bitch glides down to a village that looks like it would be from Skyrim, like one of those small Skyrim villages. Um, like, let me put it in this perspective for people who have actually played Skyrim. Yeah. Think of, uh, Riverwood. That kind Pretty of much, yeah. It's just a small village at the bottom of a hillside. This creature glides down and Batman kicks this motherfucker's head off. <laughs> and then, as he realizes he's surrounded, he screams, kind of like the shout from Skyrim's dragons. He screamed, these guys held their fucking ears. Then suddenly, your creature turns around, sees a stronger enemy, quote unquote, with a shield, a fucking sword, and all types of serious shit, ready to and slash your shit. He realizes he that's the person that killed his father. No. I would love that if they added that, but I'm pretty sure you won't mess with your aggressors of your father until you mess with a king somehow. This might this will be for speculation after I'm done explaining, but here's the thing. He dodges every single well, you have the ability, it's kinda like a quick time event. It goes into a cutscene, he bites that fucker's neck too, and then it cuts out to the Unity Engine logo. <laughs> and that is the demo for the game. What I'm thinking is, because I have read the entire book for Grendel, which is the actual inspiration that these people got to make this game. And for people who don't know who Grendel is, uh, Grendel's from Norse mythology. To an extent, he's from the epic poem of Beowulf, which leads into the Norse mythology. Here's the mm -hmm. thing, Grendel had a terrible, terrible life. His mother... His mother was a hag, let's put it that way. Grendel, he realized that he was not from God. Also, do not make my comment section to a religious, religious battlefield, I do not care. <laughs> but here's the thing, Grendel, his entire existence was based around being the beast, being the bad guy. In the fucking book, it shows that Grendel is actually kind of sad and sorry for himself. He realizes that he is a monster, people will never like him. He can understand them perfectly. But he talks the exact same way they do in his head. But it, the way he actually speaks 
is in an older English or something. <laughs> like an older tongue that they can't understand. Um, what was that called? Uh, old, I know what that's I'm called. I'm pretty sure it's, it's old it's English uh, or uh, mm -mm, mm -mm. What's it? <laughs> whatever it's called. Uh, I call I, was, I think my Norse teacher tongue. from Britlet called it called it a uh, archaic. Archaic, yeah. No wait, Celtic. Archaic. Celtic. It was Celtic. He spoke in Celtic tongue. Everyone in Beowulf spoke in archaic tongue. Also, sorry for mm -hmm. being not so present in the video game. I've been a whole thing of talking, but yeah. Grendel had a certain tongue to him to where nobody could understand him, but he understood everyone else perfectly. They knew that. He knew that everyone talked about him like he was a monster. If I defeat oh, you, I will get this entire kingdom. That could have ended badly. Um, <laughs> oh, sorry God. to interrupt you, but I just hatched a fire wyvern, and it, and it instantly grew to an adult wyvern, and it almost ate my face off. Oh, my God. <laughs> but, yeah, what I'm thinking is they may follow the tale of Grendel, except kind of an opposite. Because you're starting off as a child, and you saw your father get his head chopped off, and your mother... I am not sure where she was, I didn't see her anywhere in the demo. Your mother was nowhere to be found from what I could see. I'm thinking you might take on the role, it might be like a Grendel simulator pretty much. What I am thinking is, Grendel, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna refer to the creature as Grendel because this is what I'm thinking it might take up part of the story and stuff. What if you, as you grow in age, you you begin to get closer and more powerful until you finally come across a kingdom. This is also going to be open world RPG just like Skyrim 2, so that's kind of where this comes from. What if eventually you are going to be able to find a kingdom that has your father's head as a trophy over a mantle place and he is a king on a throne? The guy, the two guys that chopped off your head. What if they are kings now? And what, and, if, what if, and what if you get to haunt them? What if you get to be their beast? And this might be a very sad ending. And it might be a spoiler. I don't know. Because the game isn't even out yet. This is all just speculation. What if you get to be the fucking bringer of doom upon these people? because of what they did to you like they started this you're trying to end it well not end it but you want them to suffer for what they did to you what if they call in a very very strong warrior like beowulf to end it they started so it what if the no no no, beowulf no no as a cameo no wait <laughs> that definitely will not be part of it. <laughs> From what I'm thinking, yeah, that cool, that will not be part That'd of it. Cool, it though. might be. It, hell, they might make references to Beowulf. They might like, say it be a, like it might be like a. Hell, they, you like might find scrolls cameo, about Beowulf like in a DLC in the future. Yeah, but here's the thing: what if the creature? What if while you're attacking these people, what if they call on a strong warrior like Beowulf? And that's where your story ends. What if your story ends by them calling in a hero because they started all this. They killed your father, they've destroyed your people, and you are possibly the last of your kind. And they call in a warrior to finally defeat you. And what if the game just ends on that? That would be kind of cool. That would, that would be a great. I mean, it'd be a fucked up ending. But That'd I be could a cliffhanger. Yeah, it would be a cliffhanger. But here, hear me out. What if it turns out you weren't the last of your species? What if you die? And it's kind of like that scene from. It's kind of like the last scene from the Last Guardian. You know what I mean? Have you seen? If you've seen The Last Guardian, go watch Jack Septic Guys play through. I have no I have no bad thoughts on it and stuff. It's a really it's good amazing. game. It's I've amazing. It. It but is, yeah, it's pretty much the amazing. end of the game, it shows Trico had children. 
Like, what mm -hmm. Like what if, what if, whenever you die by the hands of this fucking hero, which we'll call Beowulf, what if it does a pan out, it leads away from the village, it goes all the way back through all your journey spots, goes through the caves, through the trees, through everything, and then it arrives right back at the very first cave that you grew up in that you lived your entire life in, it heads back to the original tree. And in the shadows, you see two big glowing dots, and you see three smaller glowing dots. I mean, three smaller pairs of glowing dots to show eyes. That your species- Eyes could be red, that blue, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> that your species is still gonna survive. Even though, even though you died, it showed that your death was not in vain. Your species will, li will live on to an extent, which could leave them open to sequels and stuff, and possibly prequels and everything. They could have DLCs like and the next shit. Game, like the next game could, could pull a Five Nights at Freddy's, a prequel for the next game. That would suck. <laughs> it called a sequel, but it's actually a prequel, but nobody knows where the fuck to connect it. But yeah. But yeah, CJ. <laughs> I'll edit that out too. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, Traxxas. Mm -hmm. I. <laughs> I think this has been a good discussion time, and. Do you have any, any last words to end this on? Anything you want to add? Discussion time, yeah, but. Because I think we are well, coming up on the those people who live in the cold in the cold areas. I I hope you guys are staying warm during the winter season. Oh yeah, Merry and Christmas all, and Happy New Year! A nice time. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year! I know it's very I, I fucking have late a for that. New Year. I had a terrible New Year. Same. I had a <laughs> redwood for two pound axe. Yeah, but anyways, well guys, this has been Black for Halo here with some help of this has been Traxxas. Outro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this has been Trax. And uh, still, you all all have a great night. And this will be so Black for Halo here. Good night from <laughs> yeah. the southern side of the United States. And this will be Black for Halo here. Have a good one. <laughs> and I'll see all you homies later.